how to report and handle. Uh, um, this is a talk about uh, how to report and handle Linux kernel regressions. So in other words, it's a talk for people that are reporting regressions, also just as a talk for developers that need to handle regressions. So that is uh, normally avoided to, to do this kind of sharing, but well, it's a narrow top topic and mixing is better than nothing. And uh, there are many things that both sides need to understand anyway, uh, things cook down to one important and common as aspect in the end, Anyway, that is regression, regression shall be fixed. That's because this man, you might have heard of him, is like most of, like most of us. He hates when he's installing updates and afterwards uh, something, um, something that used to work uh, doesn't work, works worse afterwards. And uh, works worse also include does, doesn't work at all. He hates it uh, because people then stay on outdated versions that are, have known problems, are less secure or even vulnerable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as it happens, that man created a well-known software. A few, few of you might have heard of, I don't know if you heard of this Linux thing and uh, coined a rule for its development. That it, it's, uh, the rule is basically no regressions, but also known as uh, uh, um, we don't break user space. It's a really hard, hard rule that, and Linux is uh, pretty uh, rigid in that aspect. Even important fixes are reverted if it, if it turns out they cause regressions. To explain that a bit more, assume a totally buggy behavior and the Linux kernel is fixed and assume further uh, Firefox, for example, afterwards starts to misbehave for, for quite a few use, for, for, for one or multiple users. If the fix, uh, if the kernel fix can't be fixed, it's reverted, even if Firefox is fixed, um, because people are, uh, might use older Firefox versions for, for some time. And the buggy behavior in the kernel then stays in the kernel, maybe not for her, but maybe for a year or, or five years until really all the fixed Firefox versions are out, as long as no, no other fix can be found for the kernel. kernel. So in a card game, a regression is basically one of the highest cards, the second highest to be precise. Um, that's basically uh, uh, can get everything else uh, out again. Uh, nevertheless, if you look around, it might look like quite a few regress uh, regressions that are reported are never addressed. And there are various reasons for that. Uh, if you look closer, you see them some simply because the report was bad some uh, because uh, it in reality was a bug and not a regression and uh, uh, some because nobody located the change causing it. And yeah, sometimes it also happens that developers don't handle things uh, appropriately, which they really don't want because uh, otherwise Linus might send them angry mails, but uh, if he notices, but it helps. And I'm here to help with avoiding these situations um, and here to help users with it. Uh, with uh, regressions to make sure they are fixed. Uh, so basically I'll show you how to get your regression fixed if you are not a developer, if you face one, or how to how to handle it appropriately as a developer if you caused one. Uh, both things obviously require you to know what X exactly is a regression. So yeah. So let's get down to this. In short, it's a, a regression if is a kernel update breaks something, or more precisely to quote the Linux kernel docs, it's a regression of something running fine with one Linux kernel works worse or not at all with, <coughs> with a newer version. That's, and, and now comes a small uh, but important aspect uh, that's compiled using a similar configuration. Um, to understand it fully, let's uh, get into an, an example. Say your distro updated from 6.1 uh, to 6.2, uh, like Arch, Fedora, and OpenSUSE and Tumbleweed do every nine or 10 weeks. They do these jumps regularly. regularly. And then, uh, yeah, after that, this jump of the kernel, your beloved software from maybe 20 years ago stops working. And, uh, and it actually starts to work again if you switch back to Linux 6.1. So, yes. The, uh, that's a regression. The age of the software doesn't matter. Uh, but as I said, there's something else that's, uh, that mattered. It's only a regression as long as it's, it's not caused by an optional new, uh, new feature here. The crucial word, word is optionally here. It complicates things a little bit, um, but it's not a loophole. It's important to allow progress, for example, uh, to allow new introducing new um, security hardening techniques techniques that break uh, ancient apps. 
Uh, so it's a really good and important thing because without this, Linux would uh, become stuck and obsolete because it could uh, introduce new features that break things. And, uh, and that's why it's so important. Uh, in the end, it's just the, the users and the distributors has to choose what's most important to them, the compatibility to old apps or the new future as you have to explicitly, explicitly um, enable these features. Either you do that at runtime via uh, SysFS or ProcFS or something like that, but that's, uh, doesn't, that's, uh, doesn't happen that often. More often it's the case that uh, you have to enable these features at build time when defining the build configuration for, you, for your kernel. Um, uh, because, and, and there are all new features that might cause regressions are disabled by default. So if you take the configuration from an old kernel, say 6.1 and uh, try uh, use make old dev config to, to build, create a configuration for 6.2, uh, then uh, those features should, should be uh, disabled. And that's how you build a, a kernel with a similar configuration. Luckily, the thing is, uh, these features that are, are known to cause regressions are few. It's not something you should you lose your mind over, but it's something to uh, to keep in mind because uh, is, uh, especially uh, for for users of distribution kernel, because a deliberate um, uh, config change by your distro might actually have broken your beloved app from 20 years ago, and that's why you might need to uh, to report the uh, um, the regression to your distributor. Sadly, yeah, that often is not really fruitful because uh, they have lots of, of box reports there and can't look into uh, each of them. So you might want to report it upstream. Yeah, that's why if you want to do that, you basically uh, should um, try to compile uh, 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 your own kernel. So build it your, uh, yourself and check if it, happening, it's hap if it happens there. So it's basically boot the working kernel, uh, download the latest kernel sources, ideally mainline so to have something really fresh at, at that's where all the, the regressions are fixed first and uh, you configure it using make old old dev config um, that will, will normally pick up your old uh, uh, kernel uh, distribution kernel config yeah then then you build the kernel test and yeah if it's broken then it's really a regression uh, but in that case you easily should also compile the working kernel uh, again well, um, because uh, um, it might actually be something in that kernel that makes it work, especially if you have a patch distribution kernel, because working might be due, due to a, a patch the distro applied. And uh, yeah, the Linux kernel developers only care about their kernel. That's why you easily should uh, rebuild this working kernel to, to ensure that it was really working in a vanilla fashion, unless you have a Linux distribution that is uh, using a vanilla or close to vanilla kernel anyway. Yes, building a kernel takes time, but no, it's not that hard. And um, um, there's actually a document that might soon get into the kernel to, to uh, make it easier for everyone. It's in the submission phase currently. Um, um, but this building also might save you also um, uh, some time if you, for example, build the latest mainline kernel and see everything is working there, uh, then you see, then you notice it was already fixed and that, that, that then you won't uh, write a lengthy report and annoy developers with a bug that was all, all what he, all they've already fixed. And the thing is, uh, when it comes to regressions, you often need to, often need to um, uh, recompile kernels in the end anyway, uh, but I'm getting ahead of my hell, of myself here as we are, uh, that is uh, something for the next topic we are going, to uh, now is um, that which is somebody must locate which change causes the problem, and that's with the Linux kernel. It's it's basically like upgrades in real life. Say you pay somebody to upgrade your laptop, like a bigger hard drive or something like that, uh, and afterwards something unrelated is broken. So maybe USB or something is broken. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Yeah, the company, the person or company you paid has to fix things. Yeah, that's how it is in life. And the basic idea is similar with Linux. The developer who caused the regression need, needs to fix it, or uh, if the developer is not available, it's superior. Thing is, you didn't pay anyone and you don't know which developer caused it. And that complicates things uh, a little bit. But that's also something you shouldn't 
uh, lose your mind uh, over initially. Uh, it's fine to to report a regression initially um, without knowing which change caused it. Uh, just report it, and with a bit of luck, somebody will will know what which change is causing it. Maybe because the, uh, the root cause is already known, or maybe even somebody is already working on a fix, or because somebody can point you in the direction of a likely uh, culprit that's causing that causing the, the the problem. Someone are the maintainers and mailing list subscribers, so other developers. Um, as the maintainers and developers are expected to assist with such regression reports where somebody says, uh, hey, this is this stop working, to at least think about, hey, is that something I might have caused or where I know where, where, it, uh, where, where this comes from to help the users a bit. The, um, this often works out, um, uh, but at the same time, the thing is this often doesn't doesn't work out. And sometimes uh, uh, nobody really has an idea what's wrong, especially when it comes to complicated um, uh, problems where even the subsystems might might not not be known which is causing it. Yeah, and then then somebody else has to locate the culprit. Yeah, but who? Yeah, Linus. Yeah, Linus can't take care of each and every bug report. There are way too many of of, of them, and. Uh, the developers or maintainers, yeah, as I said, they are expected to to figure, uh, to help somewhat, but in the end, they are just volunteers. They're doing most of the work in their spare time or in some allotted uh, time slot. Their their the company, their their employer gave them, and uh, there's always m way more more uh, work than they could do in the time, and uh, yeah, they can't. Uh, uh, look, uh, they can't spend hours on each and every bug report because they get, don't get any other work done in, at the same time. And you can't uh, um, uh, um, tell companies to do the work because, yeah, do you want to say AMD or Intel have to to uh, root out uh, to look after every bug in the in the Arch directory or something or everything that has to do with ACPI? And in the end, it turns out it was caused by an uh, a back off uh, by a change from an ARM developer or, or an IBM developer. They, yeah, that th th those companies can't do that. So, yeah, and that's why in the end you get what you paid for, and uh, you didn't pay anything to the uh, kernel developer. And yeah, that's why you get nothing from. And it's why it's in the end your job as reporter to find the culprit. Um, the thing is, that's often. Um, needed anyway because many bugs or many regressions only trigger in a certain environment say with specific hardware sometimes with only with a specific firmware uh, sometimes with a comp combination of a hardware distribution sometimes the configuration is, in, is involved or it might be the the application that it's used that might be proprietary so it, the, the other developers might not have it at, at hand or can't even uh, uh, install it anyway and that's why we do you as a reporter really have to to find a change that causing it the good news is you don't need to be a developer to find the culprit uh, which is uh, causing the regression um, which brings us actually to the second reason why you often need to compile a kernel when it comes to uh, Linux kernel regressions, or in fact, uh, a few kernels, um, in, uh, in fact, uh, as a culprit often can be found by compiling, say, like around about 50, 15 kernels. Don't be scared. Uh, that sounds a lot, but it's a lot easier and uh, often works a lot quicker than it sounds, thanks to uh, Git bisect. That's actually uh, some feature integrated in, 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 in Git. So say you have uh, kernel 6.1.13 and update to 6.1.14, which out, turns out to be broken somehow. And yeah? now you go and recheck the older one if it uh, it's uh, if by going back uh, makes things work again. Yeah, uh, that's the good one. And, and now you look closer with Git or something else, and you just notice, hey, there are just eight eight changes in between. And yeah, what a bisection do does is basically you jump in the middle of uh, of those uh, of that area, build that kernel, and uh, check uh, and check if if it's broken or not or not. Let's assume it's uh, also bad. Yeah, if it's also bad, you go further down in in the history. So in this case, to the left, and to repeat the exercise. Uh, let's assume that one is good. Yeah, then you go for, to something new in the remaining span, uh, so to the right, test again, and uh, yeah, let's assume that one is also good. Uh, then you 
like uh, no, um, the fifth commit uh, was actually the culprit that that causes the regression. And uh, it works like that on a, a much larger scale uh, as well. As I said, it's around about 15 steps, typically between two, two kernel versions. Uh, if, you, if the span is a bit bigger, like uh, two or three versions, it uh, might get up to 20 or 25. It always depends a bit on, 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 the, on the kernels you need to, to check how many is on, uh, there are. Yeah, and once you know the, uh, the culprit or the change that's causing it, yeah, you know uh, it's clear who's responsible. Either it's the author of the change or the uh, committer who, uh, um, who uh, actually applied the fix. But normally it's, it's in fact actually the, the author, author, the committer or the maintainer that applies it is just the backup. Uh, uh, the, uh, backup. And the even better news is you, uh, once you know the culprit, um, it's often quite uh, it's often possible to fix things uh, relatively quickly, sometimes within a day or two, as the authors and maintainers often then can quickly spot and, and, and fix the problem. Um, and yeah, if that's not possible, which is also the case for when it comes to com more complicated uh, uh, problems, it's often possible to fix it by simply reverting the change and, and uh, uh, basically getting the feature out again and um, because uh, the change then can be analyzed further uh, later offline when nobody is bo uh, bothered with the regression. And once uh, the fix for the root cause was found, it can be reapplied later and uh, then things move on as planned, yeah. And uh, actually this reverting and reapplying is something that uh, in my, uh, my humble opinion should uh, happen more often. So developers really uh, uh, take a note. If you have a regression, always consider doing a revert because that's a quick way to often um, fix a regression um, unless of course the, the revert causes another regression or is really complicated uh, but as i said if if there's no way to quickly fix an issue it's often the good idea to revert that's also why linus sometimes reverts qu uh, quite a few fixes uh, quickly if uh, no 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 revert is uh, forthcoming especially if he's uh, uh, running into a regression himself yeah that's why bisection is so important because you know who's responsible and know the code changes that actually causes this um, is then identified and it's a small scale. It's, it's something to easily find the fix. Yeah, that's why I really want to perform a, bi um, uh, a bi bisection as a reporter if the initial query, uh, initial report uh, didn't get anyone to say, hey, this is this, this problem, it's already fixed. Yeah, it because it this bisection hands you the lever to get most regressions quick uh, fixed quickly, and uh, gives also developers uh, what they need to help you. Uh, but as it's yes, it's some effort, but it's well well spent, and that's actually why developers will also ask you to do that um, um, because you really, as a reporter, that's expected from you. And uh, in the end, the bisection is uh, um, basically the second most important aspect when it comes to regressions, and likely the most complicated one, and maybe the one that takes a lot of time. But as I said, uh, it doesn't take that long. I, um, if you have a relative modern machine, this building these 15 kernels can sometimes be done in like two or three hours uh, if, if, if you monitor things and uh, um, use a configuration that is uh, tailored to use to your system because then then building the kernel doesn't take maybe like uh, 10 minutes or 15 and then restarting and testing that that's quickly uh, then you can be done in two or three hours yeah but the most important aspect when it comes to regressions is actually one uh, is the next one uh, it's more relevant it's uh, relevant to all bugs and uh, quite simply act actually you want to ensure the, the problem is reported appropriately. There's a simple reason for that. Um, um, because improperly reported regression might not be fixed. That doesn't happen on purpose. It's uh, simply the case if a report is not seen by the right people, yeah, then it's not getting fixed. That's how it is in life because you can't expect uh, developers to look everywhere and for, for reports, they, you have to, to send them their way. And uh, yeah, that's why why re you really have to 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 ensure 
uh, the regression is reported appropriately and also in the right tone. It doesn't happen that uh, reg regressions are not fixed because they're improperly reported, but it, it happens. And uh, in the end, it's also in your own interest to follow procedures um, pro probably when it comes to reporting regression regressions because it prevents you from wasting time. Not only uh, the uh, time of the kernel developers, developers yours as well, because as I said, you, for example, want to test the latest mainline um, and if, if, if a fix was already found and applied, just maybe not, not backported yet to the latest version. That's something the, the proper instructions will, will take care of. Uh, the proper instructions are actually is a, a regular bug reporting guide in the Linux kernel. That's so that's a reporting issues document. Actually, I wrote that like two years ago. It really looks long and uh, a bit scary, but there's a step-by-step -step guide there that helps you getting through this. Um, you're free to ignore some of the steps if you think uh, um, uh, you don't need them. But it's a good idea to, to at least think about things uh, and uh, because it helps you preventing uh, preventing a, a writing a, a report and spending time on it that in the end will get get ignored because yeah this step by step guide will try try to catch uh, a few local problems early and make sure you you can fix them before you waste time on on the report there's also a reference section that explains details if you need uh, need them we had a dedicated mentorship session about that um, uh, in December, actually. Um, uh, the, the link will, uh, I, uh, yeah, there, there it is. Uh, thanks, Sean. Um, um, the, the, the video and slides are available there. Look, look into it. It will tell you what you need to do uh, when you're re reporting an issue. It will help you in a lot of cases. Um, but to be sure, let's let me briefly mention uh, the, a few crucial points here. Yeah, as I already mentioned, ensure your kernel is is vanilla or, or at least close to is close to it, because in the in the case of regressions, that's especially important. That uh, um, as uh, as I already said, uh, that both the the working at broken kernel are vanilla because the distro kernel patch might actually the reason why something actually worked or, or broke or something yeah say for example yeah um, ubuntu who uh, uh, patches the, who has a lot of patches external patches and drivers in their kernel um, adds a patch um, that the upstream uh, kernel developers refuse yeah and maybe they drop it sooner or later and yeah if you then go to an, an uh, or, or no um, um, maybe they apply a patch uh, to their kernels, yeah, that's missing in in the downstream uh, in the upstream kernel from you get from kernel.org. Yeah, if you go switch from a Ubuntu kernel to an upstream kernel from kernel.org, obviously that functionality by that patch will be missing. Yeah, and that's obviously not a regression the kernel developers can can do anything about because uh, it only worked because Ubuntu did something, and uh, there's likely a reason why this this changes only in Ubuntu and. Uh, not in uh, not in the upstream comment maybe the, the uh, code quality is not good enough well, ubuntu was just an example here there are many other uh, distributions that uh, patch their kernel ha heavily especially red hat enterprise linux and SUSE. most community distros are not that bad uh, for example arch linux open SUSE tumbleweed or Fedora uh, and Debian uh, often used kernels that are quite close to to the upstream kernel and you can report uh, uh, um, Bugs worth there, but if if in a doubt, uh, but better check if it's uh, really not uh, something their patches cost. Yeah, as I said, yeah, because what working or broken might might depend might depend on 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 this modification. That's also for the de developers among you, and that's also why it's okay to to ask uh, reporters to to recheck with a vanilla kernel if they reported the problem with a with a uh, um with a distro kernel because yeah you we all the, the kernel developers only care about uh, upstream kernel if if there's a report with a downstream kernel I, either the, the the report has to check it with a vanilla kernel or report it to the to to their distro uh, to make it's their it's it's their developers look into the issue yeah 
which brings me to the second uh, part, uh, how to ensure your um, re report is uh, appropriately um, test with a really fresh kernel. It's in your own interest as the regression might be fixed already, hence easily test mainline or at least later stable. Um, um, that's especially true if it comes to, to stable and long-term series because some fixes are even not backported there for regressions normally, it should be the case, but uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, hard to, to backport regressions fixes there. So you really should test with a, uh, with a fresh kernel and developers, it's also okay to ask reporters to do that. That can be expected of them. As long as the kernel is relatively fresh, uh, that, that, that should do it. As a reporter, you also should do um, uh, uh, some basic less checks to ensure the kernel and system is, uh, uh, integrity is fine. Um, because a regression might be caused by a local problem or something you did locally. Uh, one of the um, uh, aspects um, you really should uh, uh, ensure it's not the case is you should check the tank flag. For example, if you uh, uh, um, loaded the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, yeah, they, they can change the kernel in many, many ways. And uh, that can cause regressions that, uh, that have nothing to that uh, look totally unrelated to the driver, but in the end are caused by the drivers. Um, that's why you really don't, shouldn't have those drivers loaded and uh, that's why it's also okay from developers to to tell you hey please recheck with an un untainted kernel otherwise i'll ignore the regression that's uh, totally okay for them yeah also run if you have a file system issue run the, the file system check and things like that and ensure you don't over overclock and, and all those things uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, you need to um, ensure the, the report is submitted to the right place um, because the responsible people otherwise might not see it. And uh, the big fat warning here, Baxilla most of the time is the wrong place because it's a kind of semi-official state. There are a few subsystems that uh, look after Baxilla and, and handle uh, bug and regression reports there. Um, but most of the kernel developers don't look there. Thing is, I these days I'm I'm looking at Baxilla a little bit uh, at uh, what uh, reports, uh, what new reports are getting in there every day, and look at each of them. And if it's a regression, I often forward forward them to the developers um, to make sure they see it. But you shouldn't rely on that and. Uh, better directly report the problem where, where, the develop, uh, where the developers expect them. And uh, that's explained in the other mentorship session in more detail as, uh, as I already explained, or also in the reporting issues document. Yeah, and the uh, fifth uh, aspect uh, that's important when, you, when it comes to reporting uh, uh, regression, make sure to depict the problem adequately because otherwise developers might might miss its a regression. That sounds like something uh, simple, but it's really, uh, as you can imagine, uh, as a kind of regression tracker, I, I'm getting a lot of re regression reports uh, before my eyes and I often look at them. Hey, is that really a regression or is it not? Or it's so complicated. Uh, some reports are so complicated, they, they, uh, uh, which makes it hard to, 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 to uh, categorize them and make sure that they are really handled. Um, this probably uh, uh, depicting the problem uh, probably uh, involves various things. One of those is actually uh, easily tag the report subjects to uh, make sure uh, it's really obvious that it's a regression. For example, with a, uh, with using this uh, tag in the subject with regression, and um, yeah. The other thing you should do is if you have a regression CC the uh, regressions mailing list that's relatively new. We created it one or two years ago. Um, that because then everybody that uh, considers regression important will will notice them. And I, I for example, uh, will monitor this list quite closely, and will actually uh, handle uh, things some sometimes there. And um, the next thing you really should do in your report is to mention. Um, the last working version or the first one broken and ideally also include uh, uh, other things like if it's really vanilla, if it's a taint status, because that will avoid doubts uh, from the developers that uh, this might be not a valid report. For example, if there's an NVIDIA mentioned somewhere, then some developers will always assume, 
might assume you're running the, the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. So really uh, ensure that you say, hey, the Tain st status is fine. Yeah. And the, the next thing uh, I've already mentioned, um, either bisect the problem. And if you haven't done so, uh, offer simply offer a, 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 a um, offer to do a bisection because then the um, developers might, uh, notice, hey, hey, that guy might, means it seriously uh, and uh, is not somebody who, who makes a lot of noise and doesn't want to help any anyway. Um, yeah, those are the important things with regards to regressions. They are all covered in this um, reporting issues document I already mentioned. And uh, nevertheless, there is a dedicated document uh, that goes into more detail, and that's actually called uh, reporting regressions.rst. Um, there's also a web view of that. Um, uh, Shuan, uh, could, could, could you please uh, share the URL? Um, that explains a few of those things I already mentioned in more detail and, uh, and mentioned a few, few others. Um, um, uh, and yeah, as I said, uh, Tagging your report to make it obvious is one of the things CC the regression mailing list. And there's a third thing that's important from, from my, my work as a Linux kernel regression tracker. Uh, include a paragraph uh, like this uh, with the rec spot introduced and a, a num uh, the version range where, uh, where um, uh, the regression started. So basically the first version is the working version and the other one is the broken version. That uh, this, this paragraph with this line will actually make Rexport the Linux kernel regression tracker track the regression. Uh, we'll get uh, a bit more about my, my work with this regression tracker and uh, uh, regression tracking in general later. Um, uh, but the thing is, as I said, this is optional. It's in your interest to do this to ensure it's really tracked because then then I'll help to make, ensure that it's fixed. But if you don't do that, uh, I'll I'll take care of that as long as you see the the regressions mailing list because that will ensure uh, I I uh, I'm aware of the report. The document also explains a lot of other things. Um, uh, you might be interested in, um, um, so for example, is it a regression if a newer, newer kernel works slower or consumes more energy? Uh, yes, the short answer is yes, that's a regression, at least if it's something significant. If it's something like something complex that normally takes two hours, uh, suddenly takes uh, 30 seconds longer, that's not significant. Uh, but if something that used to take uh, maybe uh, uh, one minute suddenly takes one and a half. That's that's uh, 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 definitely a regression. Another example that's explained there is it a regression if if an external kernel module breaks when updating the Linux kernel? Uh, no, it's not because uh, anything external uh, the kernel developers uh, don't care if it's kernel code because those those uh, modules in, in if you the, the, the short version is. Um, those are docking on, on interfaces that are often are considered internal interfaces. And um, if you want to avoid that, bring, uh, bring these kernel modules upstream into the Linux kernel, then it won't happen. And uh, yeah, if, if it's a proprietary, proprietary driver like NVIDIA's uh, that's broken, yeah, um, the kernel developer uh, normally won't do anything about it. NVIDIA has to fix this. There are exceptions, but uh, they are rare. Also, another thing to cover there is, it, for example, a regression if some um, some test script or test uh, 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 CI finds a um, API or ABI change, and um, a lot of people likely will assume yes, that is a regression. But uh, yeah, in, in the end, it's often not a regression. If it's just really a, a script that tests if if uh, if the interface remains unchanged, um, but if it's a real application, some practical use case that is broken due to the change, then of course it's a it's a regression. So uh, theoretical changes, um, small changes that no uh, app app cares about, um, th those are not uh, regressions. If something changed there in the user land interface. Uh, another thing is, does the uh, no regression rule actually apply if I seem to be the only person affected by some regression? Uh, yes, almost always that's the case. 
Um, there are exceptions, like often in life, uh, things are a bit more complicated. For example, if it's something like uh, 10 year old or 15 year old hardware, nobody has, uh, really uses anymore except but you. You might be asked to let it slip, uh, but that's uh, discussed on a case by case basis. Normally, that's actually is a regression that that uh, should be fixed. Um, also, um, does a re no regression rule actually apply for code in the staging area uh, area as well? And that's there's no easy answer to that. Um, Officially, the staging uh, area is not covered by the uh, no regression rule. At least the cake config help says it's not. On the other hand, the kernel developers try to uh, um, ensure no regressions happen there, but things are getting are getting a bit complicated. If uh, if uh, if a proper driver is developed developed and introduced, and the staging driver uh, um, dropped, uh, then you are out of luck. If uh, the newer proper driver doesn't really uh, do all the features, the the, the staging driver um, handle, then then you might be in a, a situation, but uh, in a problematic situation, but that's not considered a regression. But uh, that's normally try to avoid. So don't don't uh, lose your sleep over that. Uh, and what happens if a, a fixing a regression is actually impossible without ca causing another? That's also a complicated uh, situation. Um, uh, that's uh, in the end uh, in a case by case basis decided how to. To fix that in the end, uh, often it's a lesser evil or the most recent uh, uh, change that's then reverted. But yeah, uh, it has to be dealt with on a case by case basis. There are no, no universal, universal uh, answers to this here. Yeah. Also, is it a regression if some feature I relied on was removed months month ago? It kind of is. Uh, but that you nevertheless might be unlucky because it might be simply too late to to fix especially when it comes for something uh, uh, that's dealt with old and outdated hardware um, that where the driver or some code was was removed um, months ago to uh, uh, clean up the kernel that doesn't happen often but but it does happen yeah and if if those that removal happened like half a year ago and afterwards were, there were likely cleanups or new features that built uh, built upon the cleaned version yeah then it might be simply extremely complicated to to reapply that uh, that that, uh, uh, that uh, change and uh, uh, especially as it might cause other regressions then so let's in the end um, well, uh, yet again, a complicated situation, but which needs to be dealt with on a on a case by case by basis. And uh, if you want to ensure that doesn't happen to anything that's crucial for you, you really need to to uh, should really uh, 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 test the latest mainline kernel regularly. So basically, update to every new stable uh, kernel release series every nine or 10, 10 weeks and test. If, if everything's still there to ensure you notice quickly uh, if something is broken or gets removed, because if you only notice this after half a year, a year or two, then it might be simply impossible to, to fix this and uh, you're out of luck. But it's also something you normally shouldn't worry about it if, if you're using uh, something very odd, for example, uh, hardware that's 10, 10, uh, 10 or, or 15 years ago. Other thing we covered here is kind of relevant for developers as well. Um, um, but uh, the thing is, um, there's something more for them. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, document I wrote for them, um, and some users will find this interesting as well. Um, that's actually basically, uh, it's called handling regressions, um, and it's in the process directory. And it looks looks like this. It also covers a few things we already covered. Uh, uh, we already mentioned, um, uh, for example, yeah, developers should also try to CC the regression mailing list to make sure I, everybody sees it who subscribed there. And uh, ideally, also tell Rexbot if um, um, if 
if um, uh, uh, if 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 it if the user didn't do that to make sure the regression is tracked because yeah if you forgot uh, tracking uh, fixing the regression you will get a friendly reminder from me and that's definitely likely more friendly uh, than the mails Linus might send uh, if you forget to fix a regression probably um, but the most important thing for developers is actually when fixing uh, a regression, point to the report using a link tag. That looks like this. So basically, you know, if you have a regression, you normally have a reporter. You uh, mention the report by tag to give credit to the reporter. And directly below that, um, you put a link to the archives on, on, on loa.conal.org or in Baxilla uh, with to the report because, yeah, that makes things easy for future code uh, archaeologists to, to look into the issue. Like, like uh, uh, for example, if the fix actually causes another regression later, then, then people can go back and check, hey, what tried this fix? What tried this fix to fix? And uh, yeah, that's why Lin, or, or what can happen in half a year or a year or two years ago. And then, then it makes it easy to, to look into the backstory. That's actually why Lin, Linus wants these links. He actually tells uh, developers about it uh, every now and then. Check uh, patch, uh, patch.pl actually uh, also tells you to, to put these links in there if you're using the rope ported by uh, tag these days. And why the, the, uh, the kernel docs also asks to place these links for a while already, but not everybody does it. And uh, this connection to the report is actually why the regression tracking I'm doing actually relies on them to connect the fixes with the, with the reports, but we, but, uh, we get to that uh, later. Yeah, and uh, another thing is also you, you as a developer should fix the regression quite quickly, as quickly as possible. Obviously quickly is something uh, uh, it, it's hard to quantify um, for, for, for most bisected re regressions is actually um, the, the goal to, to fix this uh, is actually to do to fix them in two weeks and that actually includes the time to get the change into mainline. So it's uh, also quite uh, quite a ambitious target already. Uh, and obviously all those this time, this two weeks and every time the, all the other times I mentioned soon, are only rele uh, relevant if you bisect if, if the reporter bisected the, the regression if uh, that didn't happen yeah then uh, you're out of luck and uh, ideally you, you developers should fix those also within that time but without a bis bisection there's no guarantee uh, yeah that somebody is responsible many regressions actually should be main like within one week um, for example if a bisected uh, uh, if the change um, that's causing when was was in the latest uh, proper mainline release because otherwise people might might be might be stuck on outdated releases and can't go back. Or well, and if it's a regression that affects many users or is critical for some reason, uh, then actually you should try to fix this within two or three days. Uh, yes, as I mentioned, that those are amb ambitious targets, and as those are only targets. Yeah, nobody will come with a stick and 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 uh, uh, get at you, but uh, you really should try to do that because yeah, those are the, there are reasons why these um, targets were uh, written down there. It's also explained there, for example, because yeah, the distro users where uh, where the distro switched from six point one to six point two, and yeah, maybe the distro like Fedora uh, doesn't ship uh, continue supporting six point one afterwards. So um, then. People don't have, have no option to go back to a fixed kernel because um, it's either not available as a, as a prepackaged uh, kernel they can easily install, or maybe it's uh, already upstream uh, from the kernel developers. They already declared as end of life and don't uh, provide stable uh, updates or security fixes for anymore. And then the user's out of luck. He can only use a broken kernel. Uh, or, or none at all, and that's uh, something that should be avoided. See, handling regressions for details, uh, it, uh, uh, it has all the details and uh, uh, 
as uh, mentioned again, for example, that you always co should consider reverting and that to reach those time frames, you need to sometimes poke the maintainers to make sure they um, review patches quickly. Sometimes um, they also need to, to send their, their patches more often to Linux. And sometimes it's also the right thing to send um, regression fixes directly to Linux. I can help there. Um, obviously, he, Linus prefers if things go through the, the proper channels, but sometimes it's really the best um, if the regression fix gets straight to Linus. For example, if the, um, if the <coughs> subsystem maintainers on, on holiday or something, or just two or three days at a conference, then it might be simply uh, take too long to get, uh, to get it into mainline. And, uh, uh, then ask me to ask Linus because then then the main you won't get uh, any trouble with your your top level maintainer uh, there you because I actually ask Linus uh, Linus uh, to pull pull that patch um, that document also just like um, um, reporting regressions contains a few other things that might be might you you, you as developer might find interesting. Like lots of quotes from Linus and handling regression, lots of them actually really a bit uh, when, where he told developers uh, how they are supposed to handle regression because that's something a lot of people got uh, got uh, wrong and it helps uh, uh, it should help you uh, reading those quotes to understand things properly and uh, will if you take those um, uh, those what, what is written there at heart you will likely never get an angry mail from him um, uh, because you didn't uh, but which might happen if if you uh, don't handle a regression properly. Also describes how to uh, deal with changes where regression risk is known. That's, for example, totally fine to get them into the kernel and uh, just warn everybody. So if the regression actually, if it actually causes the regression, I'm aware of it and can directly point in your direction on something like that. And uh, also if regressions, uh, if the re regression checker should be involved in each and every regression, ideally it would be good to do so, but, uh, um, it doesn't have to be all always the case because yeah some regressions are, are, are it could be just overhead that's not worse as in if it's a simple regression that's quickly fixed. That page also brings uh, tells you how to interact with the regression tracking bot with Rexbot, which actually brings us to the last section. Um, regression tracking itself. <clears throat> that's what I'm doing these days. Um, with the help of this regression tracker bot. So why am I doing it? Yeah, I'm trying to do to help Linus to do a better job, um, make Linus aware of, of regressions so he can decide, hey, do I want to release um, the final version or do, does it need an, an, another uh, a week of development because he otherwise has no insights how many regressions are on software. And uh, yeah, I help him with that. That's why I write weekly regression report, typically uh, on the day when before he releases a new RC or final release, because that way he can still apply um, patches that are floating around uh, and pull them in directly to make sure an issue is fixed before uh, that next RC or final release gets out. Gets out. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing regression tracking. The other is I'm trying basically trying to ensure that no regression rule is no hollow uh, hollow promise as uh, we are all just human and things can easily fall through the cracks and uh, uh, mo uh, most of us are these days stressed and overload with works and something like Rexports can help there to make sure nothing gets forgotten and yeah reporters often fear asking for a status update and uh, and uh, I, I can help them there with the dealing with the developers because they might look scary for, for, for people that are not, not used to uh, uh, deal with the Linux kernel developers directly. And then I'm a kind of middleman there uh, that, that will help ensuring the regressions are really uh, fixed. So if you have any problems with regressions, get, you can always send me a mail either on list or off list and uh, ask for help. And uh, yeah. I do this uh, regression tracking work, <clears throat> as I said, with the help of the regression tracking bot, Rexbot, 
which has a really ugly web interface. It's also a static web interface. It's just basically a, a page that's compiled and lists all the latest regressions. There are more details there. You can, you can look up um, if you push a small button there. It uh, basically lists everything um, currently tracked and reports are generated from, from, from the same, same data, those weekly reports I mentioned. Now you might wonder, yeah, why doesn't, don't the kernel developers uh, don't use Baxilla or something uh, like every other project uh, does? Yeah, the thing is, because uh, classic bug trackers don't fit really into the Linux kernel, <coughs> kernel developers mail based workflow. Because the Linux kernel developers do basically everything by mail and going to some web interface is really a lot of overhead. And uh, many developers hate that's also why when this Baxilla was set up, uh, many developers said from right from the start, no, I don't want to deal with it. And that was okay because they are volunteers. They couldn't be forced to do that. And that's why, why it came to the semi-official state. Middlemen were supposed to help there, but that never really worked out. Uh, worked out. And uh, to prevent that same uh, fate for, for re regression tracking, um, I really designed it to be really low overhead. To be uh, the thing is, in the ideal case, there's only one one additional task somebody has to do, and that's not a, not even something the developers have to do. Something the the reporter actually has to do. Uh, it's basically when reporting a regression at a at a paragraph um, to tell Rexbot, hey, uh, track this report. As I said, this this uh, paragraph looks like this with the Rexbot introduced uh, uh, version that's working, version that's broken. You can also, if you bisect it, uh, the 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 problem, use a git commit ID to specify which commit fixed this. And yeah, this small line will actually make track uh, uh, make Rexpot track the issue. Everything else then happens automatically. Uh, Rexpot then, for example, will watch out for replies to the report and consider this activity. Yeah, and if there's activity, I'll assume everything is fine. So you can trick me there if you want. Uh, or developers uh, can do that by simply providing some activity, about, but I'll notice sooner or later. Rexpot, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Rexpot will also uh, uh, watch out for patches that are posted to fix tracked regressions. Those are often um, posted in a new, new thread, um, but uh, thanks to the link tag, um, it will actually notice if a uh, if a patch get um, gets posted uh, that reports to the regression and uh, assigns this automatically, and it's also considered any activity on that patch. So replies there are also considered an activity, and will uh, will signal me and in the web interface, hey, there's some still something happening there. Developers are working on on fixing this, and that actually works quite well. Yeah. And, once the fix with the proper link tag uh, lands, it will uh, uh, auto automatically consider the regression resolved. Yeah, but as I said, that's only possible if the connection can be made through the link tags pointing to the report. Yeah, and that's why they are, why, why I why, why they are so important for my work because it makes my life a lot a uh, lot easier if the if the uh, if the fix is actually linked to the report. And also, as I said, Linus likes them likes them as well. Obviously, just as life is, we are all just human. Um, sometimes developers will forget to, to put this link text in there. Then you can basically reply to the report and say Rexbot fix and the commit idea, or uh, um, you can also specify as a subject. And um, yeah, that will make Rexbot also um, consider the regression resolved. Yeah. The other thing what will likely will be forgotten is that many reporters will forget to involve Rexpot. Yeah, in that case, somebody else like me normally can reply to the report with the small carrot before the introduced. And then that will tell Rexpot, hey, not this mail is the report, but the parents or the mail I'm replying to. And uh, uh, then it will start tracking that and everything works just like, like uh, if the reporter had immediately uh, involved Rexpot from the start. That's basically Rexpot core functionality together with the web interface and the reports I already mentioned. Obviously, there's more. 
Uh, there's a getting start guide uh, that explains these things in more detail and um, uh, a reference uh, documentation. Uh, you can, for example, uh, set a title to make it, uh, make it, uh, make it more obvious uh, what the regression is about, mark dupli duplicates and a few things like that. It's not too much. It's uh, designed to be simple and uh, uh, um, designed to be simple um, and not, not too complicated because uh, things might change over time and I, I don't want to deal with creating yet another bug tracker that uh, only works by mail. That's likely not a good idea. But may, who knows, maybe in 10 years, uh, that's what Rexpot might have become. Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah, uh, while I did, uh, let me thank NGI Pointer for uh, uh, briefly for um, sponsoring, realizing the uh, Rexpot idea that helped with, the, with funding from the European Union and actually ran for one year. And these days, Meta is sponsoring my, my current efforts. And uh, in the end, uh, the thing regarding regression tracking is uh, I keep an eye on things with Rex, Rexpot um, uh, uh, as it makes regression tracking feasible. Uh, because it watches Baxilla and, and mailing lists for me and does a lot of work that's uh, that, that uh, you that's uh, uh, humans are well, does a lot of work computers are good for and uh, yeah I I add man manually add reports uh, many reports I found and prod things when needed that's actually uh, basically every second, at least every second issue, I, I, I sometimes have the feeling I need to prod to make sure the developers are, are, are looking at it again. Sometimes the, uh, users also need a reminder and uh, yeah, um, but in the end it help, helps kernel development quite a bit, I'd say. Um, um, and uh, yeah, things are not uh, perfect and um, uh, there's so much more I'd, I'd like to do. But it's a lot better than nothing, and that's I guess, I guess why Lindus is so happy. Um, yeah, but in the end, it's it's cat herding, and uh, it's uh, really demanding sometimes. So uh, uh, that it's it's definitely not perfect. So maybe you might now ask: Is regression tracking actually worth it? Worth it? That's actually a good question. Uh, yeah, as I said, Linus seems to like it. And uh, many others said it's great that I do it too. Uh, so the feedback I get from, from developers is, is uh, often positive as well. It already helped uh, quite a few, getting in quite a few fixes on the last minute that Linux otherwise would have uh, missed. And it regularly brings uh, unfixed regains back to the attention of the developers or sometimes the users also that because they sometimes forget that the developer asks them a question and to provide data and yeah. Uh, developers often thank, thank me for that. So that's why I say regression tracking is definitely worth it, uh, but I'm obviously biased and uh, obviously in some cases is every tracking is just overhead. Wouldn't call it uh, bureaucracy because it's so low low overhead, uh, but uh, everybody has to decide that uh, for, for him or herself. In my, in my humble opinion, the benefits outweigh the downside, uh, yeah. Uh, the problem is there's always something to improve. I, I, I'm well aware that a lot of things are not ideal and could be better. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm just one person uh, and there's only so much, uh, so much I can do. Which actually concludes the main part of, of the talk and actually brings us to the summary. The most important thing you should keep in mind uh, uh, when leaving the computer soon is yeah, regression should be fixed shall be fixed. That's always the case. Obviously, sometimes things are a bit complicated, but uh, you, you should really try to help that. My regression tracking really tries to ensure that really happens. And um, to, to make sure I track is let Rexport or the regressions uh, mailing list know about re regression regressions, because then it will be tracked and I, I will be there to help you. And if you need any help with anything regarding regressions, even before the report, feel free to, to mail me. Yeah. For the developers among you, 
uh, the, the, the important thing is take regressions reports seriously. Otherwise, you get um, uh, mails in your inbox uh, from either me, your top level maintainer, or Linus. Uh, some will be more friendly than others uh, if you don't ha handle uh, regressions seriously. But the good thing is, most developers are not a problem there. They are humans, they sometimes forget that, but they handle, handle, handle uh, most regressions uh, reports just fine. Handling, uh, if you never looked at this handling regressions document, uh, take a look at it. It uh, uh, has quite a few things you might be interested in. In short, if you break something, you need to fix this. And it should uh, be a priority over all other kernel work if, if there's an open regressions. And most of the time should be fixed within a few, few days. Uh, and because it should be fi fixed in a few days, it, so it's basically users, you have a pretty strong, pretty long le level here and you can kind of demand a fix if you have a regression uh, but the thing is as always in life things are a bit more more complicated and better ensure uh, better ensure to use this lever properly so when uh, reporting regressions uh, are, uh, and uh, reporting issues here are, helps you to do the do it properly which includes um, as a part of the job when it comes to fixing regressions is you is yours you need for example to really ensure it's a, it's a regression and you not need to find who uh, broke broke uh, or who, who caused the regressions so basically you just have to bisect the regression with vanilla kernels that are compiled using a similar configuration that being said in the initial report as i said it's nevertheless totally fine to just uh, offer a bisection as the regression might be known already and then somebody can tell you uh, what to do and uh, then you don't spend hours on, on, on a bisection that uh, was uh, un unneeded in, in the end. Uh, and as long as you offer to do the bisection, the people, will, the developers will know, hey, that people understand the bigger picture and uh, um, are likely more willing to help and because you are you show that you're willing to do your uh, your uh, part of the job which actually brings us to the most important thing to remember when relevant for both users and developer remember there is no us versus them here or no users or reporters versus developers or maintainers we are all in this together we all want the regressions to be fixed so let's work together as as friends to to uh, get this all re regressions fixed because the kernel will be better than it will make, make uh, more people happy and people will be less annoyed if, if uh, they don't uh, run into problems uh, when updating the kernel. Which actually concludes my talk. And uh, uh, yeah, that brings us to the question par part, I'd say. if you're still awake and I didn't talk you all into the ground with 172 slides, if you anyone wonders. There's a chat there you can use to ask questions. I actually said something, some of you, if you listen closely, should have a question about now, uh, you now, but may, let's first check what questions you have come up to. Oh, there is one question um, in the uh, Q&A from Ivan. Maybe it was mentioned, but I am going to ask anyway. If I find the solution, can I fix a regression which was caused by comment made by someone else? Of course. I, I mean, you're doing the work somebody else has to do. Why should that person be unhappy about it? Uh, just be sure to to CC uh, everybody on the patch, uh, um, uh, uh, just CC everybody that involved, um, was involved with the original uh, uh, fix or the original change when you're posting your patch. So those people are aware of it because yeah, things are complicated sometimes and maybe uh, there's a better solution to, to fix the problem than you know, but obviously, yeah. Uh, you can fix other people's problems uh, if you want to. Right. To add to that, that's how we the open source development model works. Um, really, yeah. if you have a fix, that's one way you start contributing. And if you find a fix, 
and then you send it up to the maintainers and then uh, developers and uh, everybody that get maintainers.pl tells you to do and send there is a script that helps you um, uh, determine who should get all uh, the patch right so then review and that's how the open uh, open source development and the next kernel yeah. development works yeah also so, in the in, in the change that causes the, re the regression um, there's also a signed off by change where you see who handled that patch and you should cc all those because then you already have the, the key people yeah it's a good question And that is, uh, uh, so I do have, uh, uh, Thorsten, uh, for your information, I do have, uh, I just started a mentorship session with the 26 developers. So they are some of the ones participating today to understand how regressions are reported and get more information on how they can uh, go about fixing this. So that's one of the questions that's being asked. Hey, can we send? So there are new developers. Um, if you can have any, tips to offer to new developers more than what you have already done um, um, you're welcome to share those Ooh. new developers yeah, maybe i mean if you want to get a good overview about the, the kernel as a whole and not not just one subsystem so maybe you could be nice to to watch the uh, regression mailing list or the, the uh, the reports from Rexport about open regressions and simply help fixing them because then you look into various subsystems and how they are developed and how the people interact there um, um, to 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 uh, to see how 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 the kernel sometimes is different because the subsystems work differently and the code style is different and all these things. Uh, but that can be a little bit hard for for really new developers. But uh, if you want to get to the next level, that might be something that, that uh, uh, is li likely ap uh, appreciated by a lot of developers if, if they get help and also gets your knowledge up to the next level as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, feel free to ask them. Put it in the chat or Q&A box or just raise your hand to ask. Somebody is around and wants to do some, some script to help uh, users writing good bug and regression reports get in contact with me. I'd really like to have, like uh, if, if, if there was a script and a web interface to report regressions, uh, because it's so complicated, uh, but uh, I'd really like to do that, but there's not enough hours in a day. Um, so basically putting reporting issues into a, a script or a, a software that can help you uh, uh, reporting issues that, uh, might be something really cool. Thank you, Candice, for those links. I will dismiss this question. So there is a question for um, re reposting the links you shared, Thorsten. So no other questions at this time. Yeah, so that will be great, right? So if you can get help um, um, uh, to report regressions, uh, that's kind of what you're asking. Maybe somebody would be interested in helping to come up with the scripts and so on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, there's such a script to, to report and issues. It's not really kernel development, but it's in the area of the kernel. And uh, so maybe it's, it's of interesting for somebody. So another question from Ivan, um, which functionality you are planning to add to um, a regression bot in the future? Right now, what's really missing? So, so there are lots of small details that are not really working well. The user interface is sometimes for a little bit too, uh, too complicated. I, I mentioned you can add reports from somebody else um, um, with this carrot thing and before they introduce that something a lot of people get get wrong. Uh, Rexpot, it's uh, and there I need to 
need another command for and implement that, but I didn't get around to it. Uh, some people ask for improvements to the web interface to, to for example, also mention the, the, the commit um, subject uh, of the culprit. But the most important thing that's missing right now is basically um, something the subsystem maintainers can use to keep track of regressions in their area. For example, if the network uh, maintainers uh, want to check, hey, what um, regressions are open in the network subsystems, uh, that's, bas uh, that's not easy right now for, with Rexpot. Um, and uh, that's something I need to work on. But uh, in the last one or two months, I didn't really get around to, to write, uh, uh, work on Rexpot much. But that's basically the most important feature missing right now. And maybe make it a little bit more beautiful. Uh, but uh, I mean, on the other hand, uh, the functionality is what counts, and uh, the web interface is uh, basically for me anyway. But there are lo lots of details that are really uh, don't work just like I had expected them to work. So it needs some some adjustments. But all those uh, watching mailing lists and prodding uh, developers and users to, to get regression fixed takes a lot of time every day and there's not much time right now anymore to, to work on Rexpot. Any other questions? Any features you want to see in Rexpot? No questions at this time, looks like, from in the chat or Q&A. Yeah, if anybody wonders, I mentioned earlier, or quite early in the talk, that uh, regressions is the second highest card if, if Linux was a card game that beats nearly everything else. But sometimes there, are, sometimes there are situations where regressions are accepted, but those are pretty rare. So the, the thing I think Linus once said, Linux must be, uh, Linux must be useful. And uh, if it's not useful, uh, then, then uh, we, we didn't do what we are supposed to do. So that's why we get some regressions um, uh, in, in rare cases are accepted. One of them, well, for example, was uh, the mitigations for the um, for the meltdown uh, and and spectral um, uh, vulnerabilities in many modern CPUs. They, for example, uh, obviously introduced the performance regressions. Uh, yeah, but not fixing them would be worse for users. So there, this performance regressions was something that users had to deal with, had to live with. And uh, that's why I said it's only the second highest card. So security sometimes um, trumps uh, 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 the no regressions rule, but that doesn't happen often. Um, even if, for example, if a security change causes a regression, uh, you really should report it. Maybe some way can be found to fix a security issue and at the same time avoid causing a regression. That's often possible if, if, if the regression becomes known. Oh, that is good to know, definitely. Um, so any other questions on anything um, related to regressions? Okay, so, okay. Um, there is one in the chat. Maybe adding some automation functionality like Syscaller have will be good for um, Rexbot, like the automation of patch testing. Some, yeah, like, like the patch testing. I mean, the pet, 
normal rack spot stays tries to not get into the middle and stays at tries to stay at the time as subsystems work differently um and um and uh, normally the subsystems already has uh, have uh, uh, mechanisms to test their patches and to review them getting in between there and forcing forcing everybody to 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 reduce rack bot for something that's unlikely to fly but there's one thing I once considered that might be good to have in Rexpot sooner or later is uh, if reverting a patch is actually uh, reverting a, a culprit is up, up is, uh, is is no that's uh, uh, from the beginning if uh, um, Rexpot could check if reverting the culprit is actually possible and um, even uh, maybe hand users with a something to to test that uh, because then uh, users could uh, uh, if, if that's checked and tracked if reverting helps um, um, then i or linux could simply decide okay yeah let's revert this uh, uh, fix quickly because the developer doesn't get uh, uh, closer to a fix and uh, then uh, th that could speed th some things up and actually made uh, make uh, um, developers uh, act more quickly but uh, yeah shouldn't be actually too much work but as i said most of the time Rexpot stays uh, tries not to get into the middle of the of the uh, uh, developers workflows and stays a little bit at the side and uh, if you have concrete ideas what Rexpot could do there that would be of benefit for for the developers or, 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 or users to tell me I I don't see much uh, um, la, uh, what what uh, could be helping uh, uh, yeah automated patch testing is I don't think a platform reverts is is useful. I I agree um, that um, uh, this in itself uh, compiling the bugs and reporting and keeping an eye on them. Then. I mean, it is a it is a different uh, goal for this Rexpot than a Syscaller, for example. Yeah, so exactly. Syscaller does fast testing, and it very different goals and very different outcomes. Um, and and then also we do have um, lots of test wins that do a lot of testing already. And then, uh, and then, it's uh, it's easier to go that route of letting uh, things work the way they do. Yeah, and and yeah. maybe solving the the unsolved problems and not trying to to solve a problem that was already solved ten times uh, and an eleventh time. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is a white space, right? We did not did not have before you started. Um, we did not have a um, a a good way to track all the regressions, compile them, somebody looking at them. We're all doing piecemeal work, um, but uh, um, this is one uh, concentrated scope, uh, effort that is very focused on this. And this is a this was a white space that um, you took on. Yeah, yeah there, was, so, there was some regression tracking in, in 2008 to 2011, 12 or something by Rafael, mm -hmm. but he did it with Baxilla and uh, yeah, that's also kind of double bookkeeping and not everybody participated and uh, was quite exhausting in the end. Rexpot is designed to be basically like a more like a self-service. So if it gets a bit, bit better and gets this subsystem, of, um, uh, gets more useful for subsystem developers, maybe it will simply work on their own in the future and doesn't really need that much more from me because subsystem developers use it directly, but that's a, a, a dream right now. There's a lot of things need to happen before, before it uh, gets to that stage. Right. All good questions. Anything, any, anybody else that have a question? So I have a question of my own. Um, so how often, how many regressions, do you keep track of how many regressions uh, get fixed in each of the RCs or overall in um, a release cycle? 
No, I don't try to do any such stats mm -hmm. um, because some regressions are really not worth tracking. For example, sometimes I, I see regressions only because I see a, a patch being posted to fix them and uh, adding those regressions to, to the tracking would take my time and it's likely just overhead that as of now, I don't think it's, it's worth it. And uh, so I'm, I'm keeping the, the more keeping an eye on those um, that are more crucial and how, how many depends. Um, the, the last cycle, uh, there were quite a few regressions that kept me quite busy. That likely was because there was a festival season in New Year. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of uh, regressions piled up. And then we had a week where like uh, 10 or 15 regressions were suddenly fixed and everybody came back. And then there are weeks, uh, especially when a new cycle opens, um, when uh, all the problems in the older one are already solved and, uh, uh, and uh, problems of the next are not, not found yet. And uh, there are may maybe uh, one or two regressions in that, those weeks that are fixed. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's, I mean, counting these things without adding any value is not, useful so that's yeah. great maybe um, sooner or later it could do that but before when we do that it it uh, uh, needs to to be even more streamlined to, so maybe when when developers post patches that they immediately tell Rexpot about it and Rexpot picks everything up from the fixes tag and the subject and the reported by we could do that if we wanted to but right now i don't see much added value apart from stats, but uh, yeah. We are almost uh, out of time, about five minutes left, I think. Uh, any other questions? Last chance. Yeah. Looks like there are no more questions. Um, Candace, would you look? I think I'll throw it back to you, Candace, to see. Perfect. Thank you, Thorsten. And thank you, Shua, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today, and a copy of the presentation slides will be added to the Linux Foundation website. We hope you are able to join us for future mentorship sessions. Have a wonderful day. Bye.